This is Drew Spence from the Dynamic Universe and also Digital Art Live starting a series called 10 Minute Tutorials or Troubleshooting Daz. We had a question on the Daz forum, how to add a logo of symbol to a cape. So we have a character. This is Rania. We added a uh, Genesis 3 cape. This is for the males, but I fit it to the character. And then I went into the settings for adjustments and expanded it a little bit so it covered the shoulder. So what we have is we want to put some sort of logo on the back of the cape. We select the cape, then we want to switch to surface. We have the cape here. We want the cape body itself. I check the base color. In this case, it shows me where the cape is located. I hit browse and I see the cape here. We want the diffuse version of the cape. This appears to be it. If I hover the mouse over this, it will tell me the actual name of the file. If you can see if my screen is cut off, but it's called cape01-diff. So we're going to see it here. This is it. I browse and grab it. Looks like it's this guy. I'm going to create a folder on my computer where I'm going to copy and paste it. What I did also is I have the logo that I pulled down from the internet, which is just a PNG file that I found. So I'm going to, let me show you this. I'm going to copy this cape texture from there and place it in my folder. So now I have this, which is the actual texture that it selected. We're going to bring the cape in. So now I can see that this is the cape of my character. The texture that's being used then I'm going to bring in my atomic symbol it does appear to actually be a PNG so I should be able to grab it and slide it onto my figure I could have used gigapixel to enlarge in it so that it already is a higher quality but for now we just need to show how this is done I place the atomic symbol on my character I'm going to select that yellow, that mustardy yellow. I could also open this up and, and pick a lighter color and play around with it now that I get the tone in the basic ballpark. But it doesn't really make that much of a difference. We'll begin to tinker. Now I add that to my symbol. And now I've got a symbol that matches the color of the cape. And it's a little bit more original than just having the blue. And of course I could play with them and mix them together, but I have a new texture now for my cape with my yellow symbol that matches this outline. Then I'm going to, I could save the whole thing, adding the logo, I could save it as a Photoshop just in case I'm gonna come back and play with it some more. But we're gonna take our first shot. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG, usually the same format this is in, and I'm gonna give it a name. And I'm gonna call it Edit01 because this is the first one that I'm editing. And in case I want to move it around or change the size of it, doesn't matter really. But if I want to change the size of it, I'll have a second shot at it because we need to refresh it. So I have my character. Now when I navigate to the cape and I hit browse, I'm just gonna go navigate to that new folder. So I'm navigating back to that folder that we have. And instead of picking the actual cape that I copied and pasted there, I'm going to pick my new cape. And then when I open it, the cape, uh, it actually did put the texture of the cape on there. But I could see that it's distorted with the folding of the cape. So now what I learn is, let's see if we can do anything with the cape. Let's see, cape billowing straight back cape flying so yeah it does this to the cape so I kind of know that a big symbol like that probably would be better off being smaller and placed at the center of the back maybe higher up if it's going to billow out like this and distort so we're going to go back into our document 
We know that the symbol looks great. It's just that it's going to get caught in the folds of the cape. So it's probably not the best idea to have a giant logo that folds up with our cape. So we're going to take it this time and shrink it down and try to get it underneath so that maybe it's not going to billow out so much on the cape. That might be a better look. And then we're going to save it as O2 because this is my second attempt at it. So we call it O2 and I save O2 on there. And this time let's try the little baby O2. And now I get a cape symbol that is less distorted by the actual billowing of the cape. Not bad. Let's see if we've got some uh, we could do with this cape again. So we're going to get a little bit of distortion on the symbol. Obviously, if that symbol appears in other places, they will know that, you know, that's the cape or that's the symbol. When the cape is fully stretched out, it's not so bad. You know, depending on the shot that I'm going to use. Let's see what happens if I put the other one back. Let's pick the other one. Right? And pick the original one again. And see that it's not so bad. So a reading audience would understand that that's the actual cape texture. But it's going to do a little bit of bending because it's following the folds on the cape. So it might be a little difficult to pull off a convincing cape that's going to have a logo on it, which is probably why most capes don't actually have logos on it. That is the process, which is what we're here for. I will see you guys. Thank you.